Hey all, I'm Paul Rees, an engineer with developer relations on Google Machine Learning, and welcome back to ML on Android with MediaPipe, a series introducing machine learning and its application on Android with a new MediaPipe solutions framework. In this video, you will learn how to use MediaPipe to both detect faces as well as find specific points or landmarks on those faces. One important thing that I want to emphasize is that this task focuses entirely on detecting and marking faces and does not support facial recognition. Let's start with face detection. This, as you might guess, detects faces, and MediaPipe Tasks supports this for still images, video files, and live camera streams. Along with telling you that a face is even in the frame, the face detection task will return the bounding box information for that face, letting you locate it within the image. This is particularly useful when doing more complex operations with face detection, like isolating a face that you want to turn into a profile picture, or making sure a person is centered in a camera frame before taking their picture. To do this in Android, you'll need to start by downloading a model file and storing it in your app's assets folder. If you're following along with our sample on GitHub, which I'll link to in the video description, then that will be handled for you automatically by the download model's build script. After that, you can import the media pipe task vision library in your build.gradle file, which will contain everything you need for this machine learning task. From there, you will need to create the face detector object that will do all of the heavy lifting for the machine learning feature. You can start by making a new base options object that sets the path to your model, then create a task specific options configuration object that sets a required minimum detection confidence that must be met to return a result, as well as a running mode. In this example, you will detect against a live camera stream. And since we're using a live camera stream, which runs detection asynchronously, you will also need to associate a set of result and error listeners with the detector. Once you have all the configuration done, you can create your new face detector object. To keep things simple, I'm going to skip over the camera feed code, but you can find it in the official sample on GitHub, which I'll link to again in the video description below. The end result of this is that you'll get an image proxy object that you will turn into a bitmap, and then create a new media pipe image object that will go through the inference step. You can also create an image processing options object to handle image rotation, letting you match your input camera stream orientation with whatever the model is expecting. After you have your MP image created, you can pass it into the phase detectors detect async function, along with the time step and potentially the image processing options. This will return a face detector results object containing a list of detected faces matching your set criteria, a set of key points, and the information for the bounding box for each face. Once you have those results, you can do something with them, like extracting the face image from the bounding box, or just drawing the bounding box to track movement within that frame. If you want to see all of this in a practical example, you can find the sample app linked in the description below. There you'll see how you can detect a face and draw a bounding box, along with its confidence score over the camera stream's display UI. Now that you know how to detect faces, let's take this a step further and really get into the details of the detected face. You can do this using the new face landmarker task for MediaPipe, which is able to locate 478 unique points on a face, as well as attempt to classify different facial gestures, such as eyebrows raised, eyes open, or smiling, using something called blend shapes. What's cool about this is that the task can detect over 50 different attributes, so it's definitely worth checking out what all it can do for you. This might also look familiar to you from our announcement at Google I.O. 2023 showcasing Project Gameface, a MediaPipe power tool that allows a user to control their computer using facial expressions. If you haven't seen it, you can find a link in the video description below. And like other tasks that you've seen in this series, Face Landmarker is made up of multiple separate models to get to the end result. The first model will attempt to detect if a face even exists within the image that's being evaluated. If the face does exist, then a second model will attempt to find the 478 unique landmarks for that face. Finally, a third model will look over that collection of landmarks and try to figure out what sorts of facial gestures the person is making. And despite the number of steps involved, MediaPipe Task wraps those all up for you in a simple image in, data out format, so you can add this really useful feature set to your Android apps without worrying about a lot of the underlying details. To get started, you'll need to import the MediaPipe Task Vision Library, just like you did with face detection. You will also need to create a set of configuration options for the face landmarker, though this time there's actually a few extra items worth mentioning. Min face detection confidence, min tracking confidence, 
and min face presence confidence are all used to make sure a face is in frame, or still within frame, before running landmarking detection. The reason we have these is that the face landmarker task can take a little time, so ensuring that it has a reasonable level of success before even starting is one way we're able to optimize this machine learning pipeline. You'll also still want to associate listeners with your options object, just like you did with face detection, but this time you will create a face landmarker object. For the last step, which is also very similar to face detection, after you have received an image to evaluate from the camera, you can convert it to a media pipe image object, then call detect async to start the process of mapping out the user's face. Where this gets more interesting is the amount of data that you get back from the face landmarker. It contains a list of 478 face landmarks that each have their own X, Y, and Z coordinates based on the input image. The X and Y coordinates are normalized from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 and match up to each landmark's point in the original inference image. Plus the Z coordinate represents the landmark's depth in relation to the center point on the face, with smaller values being closer to the camera, while scaling the Z axis to roughly the same as the X axis. This is also where you'll find the blend shapes values for expression classification, along with their related confidence scores. And the last thing this result object will contain is a set of values that can be used for transforming faces, which is useful if you want to do any UI effects, like applying augmented reality filters to the user, such as adding an animal mask like you can see here. Great, that was an overview of the face detector and face landmarker task that are available with MediaPipe for Android, which we hope will help you continue to build fun, useful, and interesting apps. When you do build these great apps, please post them online and tag Google developers. Plus, leave a comment right here on YouTube because we're excited to see all the cool things people make.